matter what Crazy Frog tries to tell you, Axel Foley did it first. And now he's back. Yes, that's right, ladies and gents. 30 whole years after the last entry and 40 since the original, Axel is back in Beverly Hills for another bombastic adventure. This time in Netflix's Beverly Hills Cop, Axel F. Will this long-awaited sequel somehow find a way to stick the landing, or will it fall flat on its face like so many of its kind already have? Let's go behind the captain's back and take a trip to the 90210 to find out. Hello ladies and gentlemen and movie lovers of all kind and welcome back to the channel. As always, I am your host, Brett Murphy, and for today's video, I have yet another brand new ranking for you all, as I am going to be ranking the four Beverly Hills Cop movies. As I always like to mention, before we hop into things, I just wanted to let you all know that I have an entire playlist dedicated to all of my ranking videos. There are well over 100, probably over 150, maybe even closing in on 200 videos in that playlist for you to enjoy. So if movie rankings are your thing, then and be sure to check that out and I guarantee you'll find something you like. And so without further ado, let's hop right into things. Hooray! Coming in at number four, and to no one's surprise, is Beverly Hills Cop 3. This one, to me at least, so noticeably lacks much of the heart, soul, and energy from the first two. It's not a terrible movie by any means, and definitely doesn't deserve some of the painfully low scores it holds, like a 16 on Metacritic. Yowza. That being said, it doesn't come even remotely close to its predecessors. Everyone in here just seemed bored. The movie feels so lifeless in a lot of ways. Like I just said, the performances in particular are bland. The humor is basically non-existent, the direction lacks any sort of flair, I mean, even the music feels like it's not trying. Though a lot of this has been sorted out in interviews since this movie's release. Essentially, it was a mix of Murphy feeling down in the dumps because his last few movies were flops, he wanted to be taken seriously as an action star, and he thought, Axel should be more grown up and mature in this one since he wasn't a rookie anymore. Anyway, I guess all of this caused a lot of turmoil on the set and made this movie notoriously difficult to work on. Anywho, the story plays out exactly as you'd expect. Taggart is woefully missed, and it feels like the movie was having a serious identity crisis throughout its entire runtime. Part kid-friendly mystery, part Beverly Hills Cop, and part serious 90s action flick. It didn't know what it wanted to be, and so it tried to be all of them at once and failed at really being any of them. All of those negatives aside, I still had fun with sections of this movie. Sometimes I was shaking my head in disbelief or disappointment, but sometimes I was laughing. Some sections felt like they improved the action a bit, and some of it still had that charm that I wanted and was looking for especially when Reinhold and Murphy were back together. As a final note, I didn't care much at all for Detective Flint or the love interest Janice. Didn't like the villains at all. I mean, they somehow managed to waste the great John Saxon for crying out loud. Yeah, I was fully aware of the reputation this movie had heading in, but I was still hoping for better than this, even though I do think it has some redeeming qualities. Taking home the bronze medal for today's video is Netflix's recently released Beverly Hills Cop Axel F. God, I missed you, Axel. Oh yeah, we all did. What a welcomed return to form for the Beverly Hills Cop series after a 30-year hiatus. The third left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths, and for good reason if you ask me. So when it was announced that a fourth was in development and headed straight to Netflix, people were understandably skeptical. Thankfully, we really had no reason to worry. No, it certainly does not recapture the magic and charm of the first two original movies, but it is a massive step up from the third and a hell of a fun time. Honestly, I would have loved to have seen this on the big screen. Eddie Murphy is back and in top form as the lovable, quick-witted, and wise-cracking Axel Foley. Murphy has been in and out of the spotlight the last number of years, and this is the first big role I've seen him in since Dolomite. And I gotta say that it was so good seeing him back just doing his thing. 
Though Taggart and Rosewood are back in this one, they're in much more supporting roles. Especially Rosewood, who we really don't see all that much of, unfortunately. But when they are on screen, you just get that wonderful nostalgic sensation. Joseph Gordon-Levitt is the major supporting character here, and I thought he was solid. The other sidekick is Axel's own daughter, played by Taylor Page, who I thought was just okay, sadly. She had some good moments, but I didn't always find her character had the best writing, she had the best delivery, or had the best chemistry with Murphy. Minor spoiler here, very, very minor, but it's revealed very early on and is easy to guess right off the hop, but the villain is played by Kevin Bacon, who was excellent. The character was generic as hell, just like Bad Guy 101, but you could tell Bacon was having fun with it. The story is a mix of nostalgia slash fan service and a paint by the numbers police procedural. It's very predictable and there is not a single thing in here that is going to shock or surprise you. That being said, it's the characters, the series' best action, and the humor that kept me having a good time. The CGI could be wonky at times, but it's infrequent so I can easily overlook that. Some pacing issues here and there too, I found sometimes it needed to pick it up a bit, and then other times it felt like some scenes were missing or cut out or I missed something. Yeah, I know, long review for a fourth installment in a long thought dead series, I know, I know. Last points are that Lorne Balfe deserves a lot more love for his score. I thought it was fantastic, and the title is stupid. Why not just call it Beverly Hills Cop 4? Regardless of the issues, the long and short of it is this. If you're a fan of the previous movies, especially the first two, you're gonna have a great time with this one like I did. Coming in at number two, the runner-up on today's list is the original Beverly Hills Cop. This is one of those movies from the long list of my father has been telling me to watch this for ages, and I finally got around to it. And damn it, he was right again. This was great, and I'm ashamed it took me so long to check it out. The story is super by the numbers, just a very generic police procedural that doesn't do anything new, even for its time. But that's more so the backdrop to what really matters here, the characters. Murphy, Reinhold, and Ashton are all superb. They work well together and solo. Murphy is of course the star though, as the young hotshot, both as an actor and a character, Axel Foley. He spent the whole runtime spitting out one-liners and witty remarks, and I absolutely loved it. Just a total smartass, but he knew his stuff, and he knew how to handle himself. The villains do suck, though. So boring with no personality whatsoever. Although it was cool to spot a young Jonathan Banks in here, who you will likely know best as Mike from Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. The upbeat score, non-stop laughter, and chemistry between the cast rise above it all though, and I can see why this is considered a classic and a must-watch 80s flick. I can undoubtedly guarantee that I will be watching it time and time again going forward. And that leaves just one, so our number one today is going to be Beverly Hills Cop 2. For me, this was every bit as good as the first, if not just a little tiny teensy weensy bit better. Everything I enjoyed from the original is present in this movie. I found it funny, the lead trio had great chemistry, and there was a killer soundtrack yet again. Everything I just said in the previous entry is definitely still here, but so are some of the bad things. Like, once again, the story is generic. Serviceable, but generic. Although I did find the villains to be a bit better. Not by much, but a little more memorable than the first time around, especially Bridget Nielsen in her prime. Wowza. I also like that this one was a bit more of a game of cat and mouse, where we were following some professional, highly skilled and well-trained bank robbers, and our team of three trying to track them down after their captain was shot by them. It still does suffer from some very lackluster action like the first one. The car chases are fun, but the rest is a little rough. Though I will say, Tony Scott, R.I.P. legend, did try to do his best with what he was given. Nevertheless, this is a worthy sequel for sure. I still haven't fully settled though on whether I actually do like this one more than the original, but for today's video, I had to make a choice. I couldn't cop out and call it a tie, so the sequel takes the top spot for now.
So that is all for today's video, folks. Be sure to let me know down in the comments below if you agree or disagree with my ranking. While you're at it, don't forget to let me know how you would rank the Beverly Hills Cop movies. What did you think of the fourth entry, Axel F? Do you think it was just what this series needed? Do you want to see a fifth movie? Or do you think this series should have stayed dead? Comment below and let me know. As a reminder, this is the revamped BAM2 movies, and it is your one stop for everything movies. Be it rankings like this one, video essays, top 10 videos, versus videos, tier list videos, I have it all and so much more, along with your daily nerdy news wrap ups. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that little bell icon so you don't miss a thing. As always, folks, I thank you all so very much for watching. Stay happy, healthy, and safe out there. For myself and the rest of the BAMTube team, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time, and that's a wrap.